Welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, I am reviewing Gene Forge. Don't judge a book by its cover. This is the perfect phrase to describe this game. Gene Forge was released in 2001 and it was created by one person, Jeff Vogel. One person made this game. I didn't know what to expect when I saw the title screen, but I soon found out there was a lot to discover in this game. Gene Forge doesn't have any music except for one short theme at the title screen, so I'm using a different song for the background because I like having background music in my reviews. The song will be in the description. There are minor spoilers, you have been warned. Here is my review of Gene Forge. The story starts off with your character being accepted into a group known as the Shapers. The Shapers are the oldest and most respected group in the area. They can create life and use this ability to their advantage so they can accomplish their goals, whether big or small. After years of hard work, you are finally being accepted into this group, but you have to do one thing before they start trusting you. Spend five years in one of their colonies. You start your voyage and everything is going well until a strange unknown ship attacks you. The battle is fierce, but your living craft is no match for this ship and carries you to shore before dying. Your living craft is dead, but there is something else that is very wrong. You are not at the location the Shapers told you to go. You are on Susha Island. This island is barred. It's forbidden for a reason. You are stuck on this forbidden island with no way out. You have to explore, talk to people in the area, learn the history, discover its clans and secrets, and figure out how to leave. Gene Forge is a mix of science fiction and fantasy. Right from the start, you will notice that Gene Forge lets you truly discover things on your own. You get a tiny bit of info in the beginning, and then you are sent off to figure everything out. I honestly did not know what to expect at first. After I explored a couple of areas, I was still trying to figure out my impressions at that time. The game has an interesting concept. You play as a god. A vulnerable god, you can die, but you are able to create different life forms and control them. You are part of a sect that uses that ability, and that island you are on is filled with groups that were and are affected by the Shapers. They've had a major impact on this island, and you will see it everywhere you go. The group known as the Obeyers still worship the Shapers, even though they abandoned the island long before Gene Forge, they still follow their basic instinct to obey the Shapers like living gods. The faction known as the Takers on the other hand want their freedom. They stopped worshipping the Shapers and are fighting for the freedom to be individuals rather than servants. There are more factions to discover, but I'm not spoiling it. Thankfully, the writing not only complements the background of Gene Forge, it's really good on its own too. The writing in this game is descriptive. It helps you form a better understanding of the areas you visit and helps make up for the graphics. When you enter new areas, the first thing you see is a detailed description of the area. And when I read them, I noticed the areas were explained in a vivid way. It tells you what the area looks like in detail. I'll give you an example. This is a small part of the description for an area called Kazig Ruins. The buildings, however, have crumbled into ruin. The process was not entirely natural. The structures have been thoroughly looted and defaced by serviles. A crumbled statue nearby testifies to their handiwork. Now, when you talk to characters, the game will describe their moods and what they look like. For example, if you're talking to a character that is angry, it will describe his gestures and his mannerisms to tell you that he is angry. And it's the little details like this that make Gene Forge shine. Jeff Vogel obviously paid attention and made sure to give us detailed and descriptive writing to help us understand this island more. The game has to rely on its writing when it comes to atmosphere. The graphics are basic and there are barely any sounds in the game and no music, except for a short title theme. So the atmosphere is fully dependent on its writing, and luckily, the game is very immersive and interesting. Don't let looks fool you, there's a lot to uncover. Few games can convince me to go into a different direction for my character. If I choose a certain sect to join or whether to be good or bad, I usually stay that way throughout the entire game. But, Gene Forge had me second guessing my character. I originally went around telling people to obey me and was going to side with the obeyers since they worshipped me. It's a nice feeling. But early on when I found the takers and talked to them, I ended up changing my mind about this whole worshipping me and being the god of these people. And it was this story that made me change my mind, and this is a minor spoiler. Sometime before Gene Forge 1, someone in Kraz tried convincing the Serviles to fight for their freedom and to stop worshipping the Shapers. The Shapers treated them like shit. Why should they worship them? 
Unfortunately, the people were still worshipping the Shapers at that time and they killed that man, but later on, they discovered he was right and decided to fight. When I heard that story, it changed my thoughts about the island and the Serviles. Very few games can convince me to second guess my character or change my mind, but Geneforge did. I enjoyed the story, but I have two issues. One, minor pacing issues near the end. I felt that Jeff added in some areas that didn't need to be there and it made the end game tedious at certain parts. Areas with lava pits that you have to cross and it's a pain in the ass and turrets always hitting you and it's just fucking annoying. And to me, I just felt that they shouldn't have been there. It just makes the end game kind of a slog. And I'm all for grinding, but I just felt that to get to the finale, you had to go through some bullshit that was really boring. Just my opinion with certain areas, not that much, maybe two or three areas. My second complaint is lack of music. Music is a part of atmosphere, and it can really help bring a story to life. Unfortunately, Gene Forge doesn't have any music, besides one theme in the beginning at the title screen, and it's very short. There are no themes for the cities. When you're walking around, you barely hear any noises. You'll hear some nature sounds every now and then, but other than that, the game is pretty quiet. I know that one person worked on this game, but I think Jeff should have hired a person to make some music for some of the areas to help them bring it to life more. Thankfully, the writing is good and Gene Forge has an interesting concept and background. But still, I felt like that would have helped the game a lot more to put some music in there. I was pleasantly surprised on how good the story in this game is and it tackles some complex themes like being a god and giving life and the quest to do whatever it takes to make yourself more powerful through any means even fucking with the nature of your body. And there are some tough choices in this game, it really had me thinking. And there are different endings too so you do have influence on the people in this island. Gene Forge is an isometric RPG with turn based combat. You level up, you choose skills, you get experience, basic stuff. But Gene Forge changes this up by letting you play God and create creatures using essence. These creatures are under your command and will fight for you but there are some variables in this system. Your creatures can get scared and flee, not follow you, and start attacking you, and if they're pretty stupid, they can do some really dumb stuff like trying to go into a lava pit over and over, and even though they're not making any progress, they'll run back and keep trying to go into it and basically kill themselves or get really hurt. This all depends on how much you invest in each individual creature, and there are different strategies you can use. At a certain point, I decided to create creatures and not invest in them since you can absorb them and create more powerful creatures once you invest in certain skills related to each type of creation. But there are other strategies too. You can invest in individual creations and make them really smart so you can control them. If you don't invest in intelligence, they will act on their own during combat. It worked for me, but it might not work for you. There is a nice mix of creations. It has a nice variety. You have the Friora. They look like little raptors and they can be in different colors like red or blue. And the red Friora, they shoot fireballs. You have the claw bug. They look like giant scorpions and they're like tanks. Or the Artilla. They look like giant snakes and they shoot poison. They're very effective in ranged combat early in the game. Or you can have things like drakes. They look like little dragons and they go around. Or the battle alpha. They look like giants and they run around beating people up. So... There's a nice variety of creations that you can use in this game. It all depends on how much you explore. There are canisters hidden throughout the locations in this game, and when you find them, they either give you new abilities, like creating new creatures, or level up your abilities to make them stronger. And Gene Forge really makes use of its skills and lets you play the type of character you want. If you're good at mechanics, it will definitely help you out because certain areas, you need to be really good at the mechanic skill in order to get past it. Your leadership skill, if you invest in that and you're very charismatic and you know how to persuade people, it's definitely going to help you out because that can only be handled through your leadership skill. And just a bit of advice, if you play this game, level up your leadership and mechanic skills. My character was not good at mechanics and in certain areas, it really hurt me. I still got through the game, I beat it. But still, there are certain areas that I just kept on running into trap after trap. And not the type of traps I like, the other type of traps. The ones that blow me up. And even if I run away from it and I'm 15 feet away, I still get hurt. So, those are two skills I recommend you invest in. But this is an open-ended game. You create the type of character that you want. There are different type of strategies you can use in combat based off your creations. 
they're different types. Some creations, they shoot projectiles. Others, they're tanks and they're melee fighters. So you can have a nice mix of creations for your team based off each situation. But I recommend to focusing on one creation type, whether it's battle magic or fire magic or whatever. I recommend sticking to one type. Because if you try to be a jack of all trades like I tried to do in the beginning, your creatures are just going to be at a lower level when you make them and it can cause some problems. You can certainly beat the game that way, but I recommend sticking to one creation type. You'll be mainly using less creatures overall, but those creatures will be very strong. You'll be a master of one creation type. I like the combat in this game. It was satisfying to me, but I wish they would have put in a feature that lets you speed it up, like Fallout 1 and 2, where you can speed up the combat so it's not as slow. If you have a lot of creations and you're fighting a lot of enemies, since it's turn-based, combat can get slow at times and it can take a while for battles to happen even if you're fighting creatures that you can easily beat it can take a bit longer than what i like in some areas and i also would have put in at least one more attack for your creatures for example if one creature gets to level 16 they learn a new skill just to mix it up a bit unfortunately your creatures they only do one attack if they shoot one type of projectile, that's it. Or if they just go up and fight it, that's all they do. No matter how much they level up, they're just going to stick to that one attack. And they mix it up by having different types of creatures, different colors, and different types in a certain category. So there's a nice mix, but I would have put at least one more attack for these creatures. I also have another issue with the gameplay. There are over 60 levels in Geneforge, and for the most part, I enjoy this world. It's big and it's open and there's a lot to see, there's a lot of areas to explore. But certain areas really piss me off. For example, the Mine Core. I think the Mine Core has terrible level design. First off, you gotta go through this area and as soon as you start the area, you're getting ambushed by turrets and these turrets do a lot of damage and some of them shoot multiple projectiles at you and they do a lot of damage. But that's not the big problem. I don't mind a challenge. My issue is, not only that, there's these lava pits and you have to go through them and they do a lot of damage and they're a pain in the ass to get through and trying to get your whole team through that lava pit is fucking ridiculous and sometimes when you're trying to get through the lava pits since there's enemies on the other side combat starts and your creatures they're just trying to go through the lava pits getting constantly attacked and if you have dumb creatures they'll keep running in and out of that lava pit constantly it just wipes your fucking team out thanks to that dumb lava pit that shouldn't even be there but overall, I did enjoy the world. It's very open-ended. As I said before, as soon as you start the game, you're left to explore it on your own and figure everything out. And I like when games do that, and this one does it well. One last thing about those fucking turrets. At a certain point, I was only getting 5 experience points for killing them even though they do a lot of damage. I wouldn't even had a problem with this, but other creatures that were way easier to kill i got 30 experience points but for killing all these fucking turrets i get five experience points each i think jeff put that in there to troll people i seriously do overall gene forge is a fun and unique experience but the biggest obstacle in gene forge's way is its presentation the graphics even by 2001 standards aren't very good especially when you look at the time that the game came out there were games like Morrowind, Baldur's Gate 2, Arcanum and games that came out before that that look way better but to be fair though this game was made by one person so you have to take that into account there are variety in the levels even though the graphics are basic there are different themes and different levels look a certain way if you go into the ice caves it's going to be a different color and it'll have a different layout if you go into desert areas you'll notice it some areas do look the same like if you go into caves they're all going to look the same but there's a nice variety and i do like the way some of the things look like the stone circles i like that area because i like the way the stone circles look and i do like when you go into areas where they show statues and you see columns so it's a nice variety but the biggest problem with the presentation is the lack of sound effects and music there are barely any sound effects in this game and there's no music except for one short song at the title screen other than that there's no themes there's no general combat music or general walking around atmospheric music or different cities having their own unique themes there's none of that and i think that hurts gene forge 
music can really help bring out a game's atmosphere and different sound effects. It can help you bring a game to life even if you don't have the best graphics, but unfortunately they don't have that in this game. I think it would have helped Jeff if he would hired someone to create some music for this game. You don't have to have 500 tracks, but just have some basic music to help the game. Unfortunately it doesn't have that. Now this complaint is nitpicky, but I have to say it. Green is my favorite color. But the green border around the UI in this game, it looks like someone drunk a whole bunch of vodka and barfed on the screen. It just does not look right. Geneforge is a unique experience and I recommend it. Unfortunately, it got buried under more popular titles that came out at the time and there are some things in the presentation that is going to hold it back when trying to introduce it to new players. But if you're into RPGs, you like CRPGs, and you want a game with a good story and something that's unique, I recommend trying out Geneforge. There are five games in the series and you can get it for really cheap. I got this on sale for like three bucks, all five games, but it's like 15 bucks on GOG, but you're still getting a lot of time out of these games. Five games. Thank you for watching this video. When I review Geneforge 2, 3, 4, or 5, I might review two games at a time since there's five games in this series. I don't know. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this. Links will be in the description. Thank you. Have a great day.